Yes, so I felt like trying something a bit different for today's quick test. While I was in Brazil last month, everyone suddenly got very excited about Microsoft's ChatGPT and Google's BARD, two artificial intelligence language models that can supposedly answer just about any question you put to them. So I asked ChatGPT to write an entertaining but critical review of the new Honda 750 Hornet. And it did, with a couple of mistakes, but we'll come on to that in a few minutes. First, the normal human review, written by yours truly. So let's get started. The new Hornet is an important bike for me, as it uses the same engine as the new Transalp that I've ordered blind, and that will hopefully be arriving in a few weeks, so I was really looking forward to trying it. Now, I know this is always going to be subjective, but I don't think anyone is going to buy the Hornet on looks alone. It's not ugly, but it's a bit generic and uninspiring. It sort of reminds me of the Moto School bike I passed my test on a few years ago. I can't even remember what that was, a Yamaha, I think, but it was bland too. Fin finish are typically Honda, excellent, and the paintwork is lovely, especially this pearlescent white. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of these red forks. Uh, forks should always be either black or gold, in my opinion. And I think the red frame would have looked a bit better in Ferrari red rather than this sort of dark candy red. A bit of a surprise to find that the left-hand switchgear has been lifted directly from my ADV350 scooter, but it works okay, and it meant I could operate everything immediately from the get-go. I have to say I was a bit surprised when I first sat on the bike. There's not much bike up front. It looks a bit bare, almost 125-like. Don't get me wrong, it feels fine when you're on the move, and handles much better than your average 125. But I'm used to having something a bit more substantial in front of me. The 15 litre tank is quite wide, so the bars and dash area just look a bit thin as if something's missing. What about the riding position? Well, I'll just come out and say it, the Honda Hornet is too small for me. I'm 1 meter 87 or nearly 6 foot 2, and my legs felt cramped as soon as I got on it. The seat is too short and the very hard and high pillion hump means I can't move back far enough. It's also quite a wristy position, more so than on the Triumph Trident and MT-07. And overall, you sit in an almost semi-hardcore sporty position like you get on the Triumph Street Triple. But I knew that this was always going to be the case. It's a smallish bike, a fairly standard 795mm seat height maybe, but the foot pegs felt too high for me, the bars are a bit too close, and this void up front means there's almost a sort of going over a waterfall sensation. I'm used to and have owned small bikes in the past, including the Grom and the Monkey, and I tested the little Yamaha Factor 150 in Brazil a couple of weeks ago, but the Honda's front end seemed a bit empty. I can't really think of a better way of describing it, but it's something that you need to check for yourself if you're looking at the bike. This is all my fault though for being too big, my dealer Annalise is quite petite, and she says that she feels right at home on the Hornet, which is great. I often get comments from women riders complaining that modern bikes are too tall for them, so here you go, a bike that's built with a shorter rider in mind. The seat itself is on the firm side, and as I said, there's not much rearward movement available. The suspension is on the soft side, which is great for urban riding, but at higher speeds I could feel a slight vagueness starting to creep into the steering, and found myself wishing for a firmer setup. One good thing is that the frame is extremely rigid, meaning that you don't have to rely so much on the suspension to provide a decent ride. Vibrations are well contained, and importantly for me, in the warmer months, there appeared to be very little heat coming from the engine around my legs. So, what about the engine? This is what I was most interested in, as it's what I'll be getting in my Transalp, and I wasn't disappointed. In fact, I was very pleasantly surprised. This might be a boring Honda, but it blows the competition into the weeds. 95 horsepower, 75 newton meters of torque, means it feels significantly faster than the Triumph Trident, the Yamaha MT-07, or the Kawasaki Z650. The torque is there low down, like with the Trident, but the engine spools up more quickly, and the top end definitely has more punch. The oversquare bore and stroke configuration might lead you to conclude this is a Revy engine, but the truth is you get a very flexible and punchy power plant, capable of pulling away cleanly from 30 km an hour in third, and spooling up to the red line without ever feeling vibey or overworked. Talking of vibrations, I couldn't really feel any through the seat or foot pegs. The grips were very slightly buzzy, but nothing a pair of grip puppies wouldn't cope with. 
and certainly a lot better than on my CB500X. So the engine doesn't quite give you MT09 or street triple levels of excitement, you'd need 30 more horsepower for that. But such is the engine's grunt that I found myself discussing with the dealer whether I would class the Hornet as a beginner's bike at all. Would I recommend it to my eldest son who's thinking about taking his license? I'm not sure I would to be honest, I felt comfortable steering him towards a Trident, but this Hornet is possibly too powerful to give to a beginner. The clutch lever is very light and easy to use, smoother than the beefy Yamaha MT-07 for example, and the brakes are very good for what is really a budget setup. The non-lean sensitive ABS kicks in a little too early for my liking, but that's perhaps a good thing if the bike is to appeal to beginners. How about the noise? Well, it's not got the addictive induction roar of a Triumph Triple, but it's not bad. Honda have tweaked the exhaust and given it a small and a large diameter pipe, almost like a tweeter and a woofer, so you get both decent bass and treble. Have a listen. Now, interestingly, as I was editing this video, Honda announced an official SC Project end can for the Hornet and I must say it does sound and for once look good. If it's compatible with the Transal, it could be my first ever aftermarket exhaust, which we'll have to see. How about handling? Well, the 160 section rear tyre does look a bit weedy compared to the more usual 180, but it was a deliberate choice by Honda apparently for improved kibi kibi. And it's paid off because the Hornet is reminiscent of the Street Triple in terms of handling. The short wheelbase of 14-20mm, relatively steep 25 degree fork rake and short trail might suggest instability, but it's actually very easy to swing from side to side in the bends. Fuel consumption, well the 15 litre tank will be good for about 300 kilometres or 190 miles. I average 4.7 litres per 100 kilometres during my test ride, which is pretty good considering I was really giving it the beans at times. At 300 euros the optional quick shifter is excellent, great fun, very smooth, one of the best I've tried. If you only get one accessory, get this. And there's good news if you happen to live here in the Algarve because you can actually get it for free. More on that in a moment. I played around with the rider modes a little, as usual there's not a massive difference, but going straight from sport to rain you can feel that things are being reined in a bit. There's also a user mode where you can adjust things like engine braking and I found that playing with this setting helped with the very slightly jerky throttle response at low speeds and around town. Fit and finish, it's very good, it's a Honda, not amazing like Triumph, but certainly better than for example the other three Japanese manufacturers at this price point. Pity was stuck with the left hand switch gear from the ADV350 scooter, it works fine but it looks and feels a bit cheap and I've never really got on with this four way paddle thing. Cables and hoses are better hidden than they are on the MT-07, although a couple of the frame welds seemed a bit too visible and it's a shame we don't get the bronze engine covers from the CB500 range. The clock is very easy to read, even in direct sunlight. The camera angle here makes the screen look a bit reflective, but when you're riding you don't see any of this. And the 5 inch TFT is a nice upgrade on the 500X's ancient and barely legible monochrome LCD and looks a lot neater than the messy clocks on the Africa Twin. And while we're on the subject of the Africa Twin stroke NT1100, the Hornet feels much more sprightly and responsive than either of these two, despite being down on power and torque. I came in for a lot of flack when I reviewed the NT last year and said it was one of the dullest bikes I've ever ridden. People seem to be personally offended when a complete stranger expresses his opinion on YouTube, but that's the way I run this channel. There are lots of great bikes out there, including this Hornet for example, but when I come across a dull bike or a bad bike, I'm going to tell you. Admittedly, NT sales figures would suggest I'm wrong, or perhaps that many people, especially in France, enjoy riding dull bikes, but there you go. Anyway, how much is all this going to cost? Well, in a nutshell, at €7,800, the Hornet is a real bargain. It's the best bike in its class right now, and it's also the cheapest. A tough blow, especially to poor old Suzuki, who've just valiantly brought out their first properly new bike in years, the 8S. 
which costs a thousand euros more. Of course, it might turn out to be even better than the Honda, but we'll just have to wait for the first reviews. There's more good news if you're watching this in southern Portugal, as I know several of you are. Angel Pilot, the Honda dealer here in Portimao, who were kind enough to lend me the Hornet and who are supplying my Transalp, are offering a free quick shifter worth nearly €300 Euros on all Hornets ordered through them before March 31st, 2023. So, as of the time of writing, you've got a month to decide. As I've said in my videos on the Transalp, the quick shifter is, in my opinion, the only must-have option here, so to get it for free is great. Just to be clear, I'm not getting paid or receiving any form of kickback on my Transalp to say all this, but I think it's a genuinely worthwhile offer and one that only Angel Pilot is offering as far as I'm aware, so I thought I'd just pass the information on. Please let Annalise know if you've seen this video so we know if there's any return on this kind of communication. I'd be curious to know. Anyway, before we hear what ChatGPT has to say about the Hornet, let me quickly sum the bike up. I think it ticks all the right boxes as a beginner's bike, except perhaps in terms of its engine, which is, if anything, a bit too powerful. It's nicer to ride than its bland riding school looks and low price would have you imagine, and I can see the engine being perfect in the slightly heavier Transalp. It's a great daily rider, a great all-rounder, and you do get a lot of bike for your money, except perhaps for that rather empty front end. Honda set out to destroy the MT-07 stranglehold on the market, and I think they've pulled it off. No question about that. The MT-07 is good, but the Hornet is better. It's better to ride than all its competitors, and the only negatives, as far as I could see, are the uninspiring looks, although that's very subjective, and an automatic indicator canceller that comes in too early on big roundabouts, for example and the fact that, at least for me, the bike is too small. But that's why I've gone for the Transalp, and going on the engine, I'm very glad I did. Right, let's see what the mighty chat GPT has to say on the matter. Just to remind you, the question I set was, write me an entertaining but critical review of the Honda Hornet 750. Now, I did play around with the question a little bit, phrasing it slightly differently, asking it for an amusing review or a negative review, and I even asked it to first analyse the style of Rocket Man on YouTube and then compose its answer. But to be honest, it made little to no difference. Now, I know we're being given a light demo version of the AI for the moment, and I'm sure its intelligence will only improve. But for the moment, this is what it came up with. The Honda Hornet 750, the latest edition to the Honda Motorcycle Yeah, sorry, that's too annoying, isn't it? The Honda Hornet 750, the latest addition to the Honda Motorcycle lineup, is a bike that aims to provide a thrilling ride with its powerful engine and agile handling. However, it's not just the performance that makes this bike a standout, it's also the design, which is an interesting blend of retro and modern elements. Okay, the first thing that strikes you about the Honda 750 is its distinctive retro-inspired styling. From the round headlamp to the fuel tank, the bike has a vintage look that's bound to turn heads. Okay, however, the bike also has some modern touches such as the digital instrument console that keep it relevant. The 750cc engine provides plenty of power for a fun and exciting ride. It's smooth and responsive, delivering a healthy dose of acceleration when you twist the throttle. The handling is also impressive with precise steering and a well-balanced chassis that allows you to carve through the turns with confidence. However, the Hornet 750 is not without its flaws. The seat can be a bit uncomfortable for longer rides and the wind protection is minimal so you'll feel the wind blast at higher speeds. The suspension can also be a bit harsh, especially on rough roads, and the suspension travel is limited so it may not be ideal for off-roading. Off-road riding. Right, okay. Never have guessed that. Overall, the Honda Hornet 750 is a great bike for those who are looking for a stylish, fun-to-ride motorcycle that's easy to handle. While it has its quirks, it's a great value for its price and a solid choice for those who want a bike that's both practical and exciting. Whether you're a seasoned rider or a beginner, the Hornet 750 is a bike that's sure to bring a smile to your face. It's really not bad, is it? Even though I have a few issues with it. Okay, it's a bit press-release bland, full of horoscope style platitudes and generalities but i haven't edited or corrected anything here there are no punctuation errors no grammatical slip-ups it is impressive technically i also asked it to give me a french and portuguese version and it did in just a few seconds and these were equally convincing 
It's leagues ahead, for example, of the software I used when I was a professional translator about 20 years ago. I suppose the only mistakes, if you can call them that, are the retro looks round headlight comment, which is downright incorrect, and the part about the bike not being suitable for off-road, which is something I don't think any human reviewer would ever say. But these inaccuracies, which I'm sure will improve over time, are less worrying to me than the question of plagiarism. How did it know, for example, that the Hornet is the latest addition to Honda's lineup? It's okay, I suppose, if it delved into Honda's marketing blurb, but is it also stealing lines from other journalists? If it gets really good, will it be able to imitate Rocketman, for example? That might reduce my work, but what's to stop somebody else starting a YouTube channel and imitating my work? What if Rocket Boy started a channel and just told the AI bot to produce videos in the style of Rocketman? So a few things to think about then, but for the moment I think we're all safe to continue enjoying fun bikes like the Hornet. Let me know what you think of the bike, if you've ridden it, and for that matter whether you believe AI is about to take over the world. And as always, thanks for watching.